Hey guys, how's it going? Pow in here. So in today's video, we are mounting tires on the VMR wheels that I just purchased for my 2017 Honda Civic Si. So I got two wheels in the passenger seat, two wheels in the trunk, and all four tires in the back right here. So now it's time to go to Sullivan Tire or Braintree to visit my friend Brian so we can get these tires mounted. Brian's 350Z is sweet. Dang. That wing right there is freaking badass. Can't believe this is a standard feature on the car. Yo, what up, boy? Okay, so while Brian wraps up a car that he's working on, I'm actually running into AutoZone because I need a new torque wrench. Wow, this place is massive. Thank you. So a big thank you to Sullivan Tire of Braintree, Massachusetts for really taking the time to mount these tires. So unfortunately, I can't exactly film the process of mounting the tires, mainly because of various insurance reasons, which I don't want to violate. I don't want to get anyone in trouble. So I'm just grabbing a quick breakfast at Dunkin' Donuts, and then I'm going to run back to see the tires mounted. Oh, those are looking so pretty. Dude, those look hot. It doesn't look as like thin as I thought it would. I was literally afraid it was gonna be like so tiny. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I thought the stretch was gonna make it seem a little bit thinner, but that actually looks pretty meaty. I like it. Later, dude. Thanks for your help, appreciate it. Have a good one. All right, so while we're on the road, I thought I'd talk about the stock tires a little bit before actually talking about the new tires. So the stock tires are Goodyear Eagle Sports. Now, they were 235, 40 by 18. Now, those were all-season tires, so I did like how they handled. They really did last a long time. There's barely any tread wear after the 16,000 miles of which I've driven on these stock wheels. Um, but what I was unhappy with was the wet traction and the winter traction. In addition to that, I wasn't really happy with the road noise that the tire produced. Although this car doesn't really have good sound deadening anyways, uh, but I am curious on how a summer tire compound uh, will compare to these all seasons. So the tires I bought for the aftermarket wheels are Continental Extreme Contact Sports. Now they are supposed to replace the DWs that were on my E36 that I purchased a while back for those VMR wheels. I love those, but this new tire is supposed to be even better. So it's supposed to have better traction, better wet performance. These tires are budget friendly. I think I paid about 700 bucks for the set of these tires shipped to my door, but I'm really excited to see how these tires are going to compare to the stock ones. So let's throw them on finally. So in addition to those tires, I also got a set of hub-centric rings. So the stock bore on a Honda Civic, I believe, is 64.1 millimeters. And now these are actually made to adapt to the 73 or the 74.1 uh, bore on the actual VMR wheels. So these are necessary in order to make sure that the wheels are centered properly. So in addition to these hub-centric rings, I also got a set of Nishimoto lug nuts. These are conical lug nuts. It is very important to make sure that you have uh, the correct seat and lug nut combination for or aftermarket wheels. So hype right now over these wheels. God damn! Now I really want to lower the car because I want it to kind of sit a little bit more flush right here. And if we go to the back, we can see that it is pretty flush in the rear quarter panel as well. Not as much as the front, of course, because I know you can run a little bit more aggressive in the rear, but that also looks really nice. So out of curiosity, before I actually mount these two tires on the other side of the car, I'm actually gonna do a weight comparison between the old tire and wheel and the new aftermarket setup. So we got 51.4 pounds on the stock tire, stock wheel. All right, and I know that the tires weigh 21 pounds, but I don't know how much the VMRs weigh. So together, we're getting 48 pounds on the dot. All 
right, so before we actually drive, I do want to reset the TPMS sensor to recalibrate the air pressure settings. So you just go to vehicle, TPMS calibration, calibrate. My friend Katie over here, you want to say hi? <laughs> like poke your head there. <laughs> We're both going to Eli's house right now to help him uh, work on a supercharger pulley for his S4. But anyways, so driving with the new setup feels really, really smooth. I was a little bit concerned with the lower profile tire that it was going to make the ride a little bit harsher. It seems like the tire noise is about the same actually. It isn't that much less. I don't really notice a big difference in that. Uh, but cornering, kind of swerving side to side, the car definitely feels more planted. Um, I haven't really tried hitting the brakes really hard yet. Actually, there's no one behind us. You mind if I hit the brakes really hard? Go, um, go for it. <laughs> but you know, I should know how long the Jesus handle. <laughs> Normally on the all seasons the, the tires would chirp just a little bit, but that was that was really good. I was going like 40. All right. What? Hi. Hi. Do you like? Stance boy. <laughs> Fails the shoe test. That's I know. Man, it needs to be lower. I like him though. That's hot. It tucked right in. So you probably could have gotten to the point. Dude, what are you doing right there? What's vacuuming? I'm not vacuuming. We went and picked up Alex's car, Alex's Focus ST. So. I put 100 miles on that car today. I hit wow. 80,000 miles today. Nice. nice yeah, nice. there goes my resale, so, so it's keeping it forever. Um, what are we doing today on this one? Heat exchanger, supercharger pulley. Um, we're going to have to take the... Time. Here, come here. We're going to have to take the whole front end apart. The entire front end apart for this. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and that'll give me 45 more torque and like 15 more wheel horsepower. Wow. Just well, that. well, that's the front mount? Or the heat exchanger? Yeah. Ooh. So we're taking the whole front end apart for this and the two things that I can hold in my hands. If this was my Civic, you know like I would just have to use a flathead screwdriver, right? Yeah, and everything would come out. I know, I get it. <laughs> he has a Nagi out? Ooh. Ooh. I was expecting a V5. Jeff, I think you just rebuild coming into the driveway. So Eli threw his pulley into this toaster Don't open oven. It. Surrounded by Sorry. Basically, we gotta let it heat up so it will expand the actual, uh, the, hole. the hole, yeah. Yeah, so the hole will actually go from something like this down to something like this. Front end is off. Eli, you having fun down there? Oh. Cool. You hear Jeff? Yep. Oh, there awesome. we go. Nice. Oh, come on. Woo. Hey! That took a lot of effort. Oh, yeah. Woo. Super cool in the metal. It slid right on, dude. I thought we were gonna have issues. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so happy about that. Ooh, that was a toasty, toasty car part. 11:31. It's not that late. It's we've we've done yet. we've done later. It's not midnight yet. It's not 1 a.m. We didn't turn the compressor on at 1 a.m. Uh, yeah, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> we don't have to do that. But pulley's on finally. Success. For now. For now. Until it blows up on the highway. <laughs> All right, guys, so it is another day. Uh, so we didn't actually end up wrapping up the S4 last night. It got pretty late, so Eli is actually gonna be wrapping up the front end installation today. As for today's plans, we're gonna be visiting my cousin Eddie again in New Hampshire. He has just received a bunch of parts that we're gonna be installing on the new motor that he purchased for his Supra. And we're also gonna evaluate uh, where we're actually gonna finally put the engine so that we can begin working on it. So I'm gonna pack a couple tools and we're gonna be on the road for about an hour. So this is gonna be plenty of time to really test to see how the new setup performs on the highway, so I'm very excited. See the 2J right there. Hello? Hey, dude. Hey, what's up, bro? So I just saw a bunch of the parts in the garage. So how long have you had the parts for and how excited are you to open them? Because I know you've been patiently like, waiting. Since I started, like yeah. the first part? Yep. We're looking at like four years. <laughs> really? <laughs> so let's start cleaning up the garage and then we'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. Keep going. 
going, keep going. You wanna help with some of the boxes? All right, let's try a small one. All right, careful now, okay? All right, hold it tight, hold it tight, and jump. All right, we got everything moved into the garage, or at least everything we found in your house, right? <laughs> so there might be some parts that we're gonna be missing here, but basically now we're gonna to go towards unboxing every single part that we have available at the moment. We got parts from Japan, we got parts from Thailand, we got parts from all over. Um, good friends at Mishimoto and uh, PHR, right? Yes. So we're Thank really, yeah, <laughs> shout out to Sam from PHR. We're really excited to actually start unboxing the big ticket components here. Um, so let's get to it. Before we begin, uh, we just want to make it clear that we would love any sort of feedback or comments from you guys in terms of what parts we should get or what tools we're going to need because this is the first time we're going to be tackling a project like this. So if you guys missed the first video that premiered this car, I guess, on my channel, uh, basically this car is bone stock, no turbos, uh, automatic transmission. So that is why we purchased the awesome engine that I'll link a video actually right there. Alright, let's start unboxing some stuff. So, All right. do you want to unbox the PHR? Yeah, that's first? good, man. Okay. I've been waiting, I've been waiting for this. Yeah. I've been waiting for you, man. <laughs> this is already kind of first. This is like... You kind of just took a peek just to see yeah. what's in here, right? Yeah, early Christmas. You know? <laughs> All right, so before we actually unbox everything, uh, Eddie actually just pulled up the full specs of this kit for me. There's basic stuff that I'm seeing, like a Precision 6466, uh, 0.81 AR, it's undivided. I see a Tile 44 uh, millimeter wastegate. We got dump tubes, uh, Gretti three row intercooler. Oh, bad, man. Wow, so they really- Wait for you. They did a nice black liquid finish on all these. Yeah. Cars. This looks really nice. Wow. Nicely yeah. packaged, by the way. Oh yeah, no, this is everything came. Yeah, everything seems to be yeah exact. I think I'm really impressed by the finish of the paint. Ooh, this might be the manifold. That's the manifold. Yeah, looks good. Made great the name. Oh my god. Nice work, guys. Powder coated as well, and they also got a nice logo there. But this yeah. is a pretty looking manifold. Oil feed line. That's probably the drain. Tile ball valve. I mean, um, yeah, so it gives you the chance to choose between Tile and uh, one other brand. Oh, that's awesome. Right on. Yeah. And this is I the wastegate right here. Yeah. In terms of all these aftermarket blow off valves and wastegates, they already weld the flange on yeah. and, and even powder coat over it. So that's really nicely done on their yep. part. <laughs> gonna pull the box out of the wow. They weren't kidding when they said they were powder coat everything. Yeah, right? <laughs> now you can set it back down under there. Is that what? Wow. Is it ball bearing or journal? Uh, it is journal bearing. Yeah, it feels like it's a journal bearing. It's cool how they did two different textures too. Yep. Because they did like a textured wrinkle finish on this one, but this mm -hmm. is just like a flat black. Okay, now, Mishimoto's cup. It's a gold one. It's a gold intercooler? Nice. I'm actually kind of curious to see what this finish Yeah, it's so good. Wow, that looks awesome. <laughs> oh. Really nice finish, dude. Really smooth. Wow. So there's a little bit of damage in the fins, but that might just be a shipping thing. But mm -hmm. I'm not worried about it because it's all going to be covered up by the actual, uh, what's it called, intercoolers and other heat exchangers and stuff. All right. Ooh, that's the fan for the radio. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. This is all style. Wow. Nice. Whoa. Wow. Keep the engine cool. Yeah, yeah for sure. Holy crap. So these are the Mishimoto couplers. Mm -hmm. the radio, right? Push to the limits. That looks like a Rubik's Cube. I know, right? <laughs> Got a nice little thermostat here. Yep. Pre-mix 50-50. Mm -hmm. That is brilliant. Yep. Nice. More couples. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Oh, that's the Brian Fowler. Single adjustable cam gear for the, for the Toyota Supra. VDTI. Sweet. Um, beautiful. I mean, I was thinking like, because since we have the uh, limited edition Mishimoto um, in the cooler, 
Um, that's been matched well. So. Wow. That's nice. That's pretty. Yeah, let's take this out. So you, what are these again? Uh, this one is the ATI Super Damper. Pull the bag off. Looks pretty. What's in this box? Oh. <laughs> Originally we wanted to do piggyback, but um, with all the horsepower that we needed, and uh, with the 6466, I figured we'll, we'll need this, which is the Infinity nice. uh, 506. I mean, I've never dealt with a standalone system before because I want to do one on my own E36. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to be doing probably a Link ECU or uh, a Mega Squirt something, but you're probably going to have to get a yeah. harness, something yeah. that will work uh, with the motor. We're looking at Bloom Slang, but um, I'm, I'm doing some research. Heard some mixed reviews with the Bloom Slang, but. Um, yeah, we'll see. All right, so tell me about these mysterious bags here. It's got some crazy looking parts. I feel like those are OEM I parts. I have to go to Thailand to get these. I had to do my research to find out where they sell all the GTRs and the Super stuff, and, and lo and behold, I found it after like, what, a year? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is really light too. So this is an, what, an HKS exhaust? Yeah. How much was this? 659 bucks, I think I got a good deal on it. Yeah. You should just put it on now. Right? <laughs> uh, this is the ADFC, it's uh, adjustable. Um, TN Control Master Type Flex. Oh, so it has adjustable numbers. dampening? Yes. Nice, okay, so that's what all that so wiring is So you plug for. it in, and you can adjust it from, from, the, uh, from the controller. And I see that there's a Recaro seat here. I still need brackets for those, I gotta find brackets. Those should be fairly easy to find. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I wanna find another one too, so we can match it up on two sides. Brakes. Brakes. Those are the calipers. I remember you showing me these yep. last time. But we never took it out of the sleeve, I don't think. Wow. Six piston? Four pot. This is the rear brakes. Those are the rear? Those yeah. are massive. Yeah, we need the nice. front. The front needs to be six pot. Go big or go home. Yeah. <laughs> That's insulation. Oh, is this insulation hardware? Yeah. Oh, this is for the body panels. Mm -hmm. Nice. What's They're all Japanese though. Look at yeah, this. I do notice that there's something hidden under the covers over here. This is the Barrett's body kit. It's uh, made from uh, Japan. They're also made, uh, I think Shine Auto, Auto Parts makes them too. But uh, this is the authentic ones from Japan, the Redox. Um, these were designed by a, a drift racer, Max Arito. But, um, yeah, they're really nice looking and they're very clean. They're designed so that it will keep the original shape, you know, the OEM shape. These are crazy, dude. So you get a look at this bumper. That's the canard, probably. Oh, the, oh, the side canards? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, this stuff right here, we're not even gonna touch until we get the build all set and the car yes. running. Yeah. Because we want to get the mechanics sorted out first before we want to yeah. go all full stance boy and everything. All right, hold on. Last thing, I remember you were telling me over here, there's a carbon hood, right? All the way from Florida. It's not far. Delray Beach, Florida. But, That's uh, pretty. I yeah. got it used. I like the way this yeah. scoop is like kind of shaped right here. Oh, it's chipped on the front? Yeah, when it was mm. chipped. Oh, that stinks. But um, I'm gonna have to like... You can get it buffed out probably. Buffed up? Oh, I'm gonna have to get a big chip. No, I'm gonna have to fix it. I'm probably gonna get it painted anyways. Okay. Yeah, white on this end, but yeah, we're gonna have to fix oh, that Oh, that up. chip sucks. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty big stock shifter components. This thing um, came from Norway. I actually talked to um, Arnold, owns a super store down in Norway and he was able to source these out from, from his store for me. Um, he works a lot with the uh, B160, V161 get track uh, transmission. He makes the parts for him actually. But oh. yeah, this is my transmission. This is a, wow, this is a clean looking transmission. <laughs> this was one, one of my first few purchases that I have to make. Did you get a clutch yet? You didn't clutch. get a clutch kit right, right? Not yet. I think we'll probably determine that once we get a better idea of how yeah. the boat's going. Yep. <laughs> Do not Once remove this area. Yeah. There it Ooh, is. Ooh, six speed, get drag. Yep. No whines, no grinds? No whines and no grinds, man. Hopefully, right? <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Well, we, Taking we won't know until it. we uh, change the fluid and put it in the ground. All right, guys, so we just wrapped up unboxing all the parts here, or at least the ones that we found. Thank you for having me over, Eddie. This was 
a blast. Thank you. Well. I'm really, I'm really excited to get this done. So we'll probably start putting the motor on a stand finally and start taking apart all the parts we don't need. Um, but anyways, if you guys like the contents of this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll also be tagging a bunch of social media links to myself and his restaurant and a bunch of the parts uh, distributors that we've already dealt with today. Thank you for sticking around this far. If you guys made it through the VMR wheel setup on my Honda Civic, Eli's supercharged pulley, and now the unboxing of this Supra build itself. So thank you for being patient with all the uploads. I know I'm taking a while to upload some content. I'm mainly just trying to juggle between work, family, <laughs> a bunch of other things, but I appreciate- BMW, Audi, and a Supra. <laughs> oh, BMW, Audi, Supra, oh, all that stuff. But regardless, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a good one, guys. Peace. Bye.